So we use a mantra. Reciting a certain mantra over and over again keeps us in that cycle of mantra where we're manually or, or mechanically or purposely doing the mantra until it becomes automatic. And it just keeps happening because we added enough momentum. Then the mantra runs on its own. Your mind takes the mantra on its own. Then eventually that slows down. You don't hear that anymore. You don't hear anything outside of your ears, outside of your ears. Now you start to hear your voice loud and then that starts to dim down. Eventually you don't hear the mantra because the attention has been taken off of, of the building of momentum for that recitation and the sound and you're paying attention of the sound. That dims down. What happens? The mantra ends because you're not consciously putting effort to it, but you put so much effort into the focus of the mantra that you build up concentration. Now that the mantra has run by itself and your, your hearing has, has dissipated, has gone, that's true hearing. It's true hearing because it's not obstructed by other sounds. It's not grasping for other sounds. You're not hearing the other sounds. <laughs> now what happens? Now the mantra ends, the technique is over, and you dump into a state of deep concentration. Now you put your hand on the doorknob. You already walked to the door. Now you're about to turn the knob to walk into the door of walk into the door of meditation. Because once that's done, you still have other senses to untie or to uh, you basically untie. <laughs> you have to, they're interconnected. You're hearing, you're thinking, you're hearing your sense, you're hearing your speaking, right? You're hearing your touch. Like all your six senses are intertwined. So as you're getting to that door and putting your hand on the doorknob, if your concentration was strong enough, the other senses would have been subdued or relaxed or turned inward. Then you can open that door. There's still states that occur between that and getting into that, getting into that deeper state of meditation. So you hit meditation because your senses are no longer reaching outward, so you're silent. But it goes deep, it goes much deeper. Now you're staying in there longer, you're entering, entering, I'm just using these words, entering, for the sake of it, meditation. So this is what I mean when we say that the senses, okay, they're, they're obstructed, um, they're intertwined, okay? You're taking attention away from them and they're flipping like a fish out of water. So any point between the time you started your practice of, of concentration, of self-introspection, and when all of that practice is passed, which you wouldn't know that it's passed, um, any time in between, you're going to go through these ups and downs. How well or how strong your attention is, how strong your focus, your concentration is, will, will allow you to pass the ebbs and flows or the states that happen in between.